Uh, here in Chippengali, uh, one sort of gets used to surprises, but sometimes it, um, it, um, no, no, you just stay there. S stay right there. Uh, Viv, Patty. I seem to have an unexpected visitor in my room. I wondered if you'd mind Come on, Kevin, let's go and see what's going on over there. What's the problem, Marshal? Why don't you go in and take a look for yourself? Oh, it's only Shiva, Marshal. Yes, well, I see. <clears throat> Come on, girl. Come. Come on. Come. Only Shiva? Hey, naughty girl. Come on. Well, that kind of woke me up this morning, I must say. <laughs> well, one never knows what oh, she's going to yeah. do next year, Marshal. I see what you mean, yes. Well, what's on the agenda for today? Well, there's quite a lot of things we've got to do. We've got to immobilize Jethro, our large male baboon. But Jethro's a huge baboon. He's a tremendously large one, but he had a, he's got a splinter in the mouth. Hey, hello, my girl. Oh. No, just, hang on. She's a lovable little creature, isn't she? So, yeah, what you were saying? And so we'll have to completely drug him in order to remove the splinter. So, you know, once we've done that, well, we just see what happens. In fact, one never knows what's going to happen at Chippengali next. <laughs> well, I certainly had a prime example of that today. <laughs> Come on, Jethro. Come, boy. Come, Jethro. Come on. Yeah, what, boy? Come on, Jethro. Yeah. There he goes. He's a good chap. Come on, Jethro. Well, now we got the whole group. That's right, but he'll come in here now. Come, boy. Get your chest, huh? Get ready, Tandazo. Dawn, sir. Hold it tight. Hook that up, Barry. Right, we got it. He weighs about 25 mm. kgs. Mm. So, mm. about mm. two and a half moles, I would say, Kevin. Mm. Okay, fine. Mm. Bear, if you can help Marshal on that end to pull that panel over, I'll get inside okay. here and we'll that's squeeze fine. him up. Okay. Kevin, if you can just keep well clear with that drug that's in that syringe. Okay. When do we... Okay, move it over slowly. Now listen, he's hold gonna it. pull like mad, so you've gotta hold it tight, huh? Yeah. Hang on, not yet. Right, move it over. Good more. Yeah, hold it tight. <laughs> hold it. Okay, Kevin, give it to you in the muscle, eh? Okay, hang on. Whoa. Hold it tight. Hold him harder. Hold him harder. Hold him harder. Hold him harder. Yeah, I think he's getting a little, uh, a little groggy now. Two minutes. How yeah. are you doing, boy? Yeah, he's, he's already yeah. there. Fuck you see yeah. him now? Look. All right, come and help me, chaps. Do that again. Change. You see it? Yes. You see it all right? Got it. Right. Holy cat, that was him. Oh, no wonder he was.
That's better. Now you're looking better. Come on, chum. Come. Come. Come, look, it's me. Come. That's not bad, is it, eh? You're keeping all right. Hey, yeah, good boy. Feel much better with that splint out of your mouth, eh? Come on. Yeah, he's a good chap. <laughs> you look miserable. <laughs> yes, but at least he won't be miserable when he comes around. Oh, look at that good milk. Yeah. There we go. Oh, boy, that tastes good. There we go. Yeah. They've got these names, Marshal, because an African reared this one for a month, found it and reared it, brought it in. And his name was Orbit, so we named the little animal Orbit. And then a week later, he arrived with this little female. Really? And he said he brought a wife for Orbit. <laughs> and would we please name it Lena because his wife's name His wife is Lena too, right here. You're getting down to rock bottom here, buddy. It doesn't take long. No, it sure doesn't. I'm going to let them just wander off after their bottles for a little bit of exercise. Yeah, that's it. End of the road. Feeding time at Chip and Golly requires a good deal of preparation and time due to the great variety of diets involved and the amount of food consumed. Naturally, there is your basic division between herbivorous and carnivorous animals. All herbivorous animals are fed every day with at least a dozen different varieties of grain, to which are added vitamins and minerals for health purposes. Uh, this is their supplementary meal, is that right? Yes, that's right, Marshal. Every afternoon they get horse cubes just to keep them in good shape. But then in the morning we give them large quantities of natural vegetation and then around about midday they go out into the bush and feed and wallow in the mud for several hours before oh. coming back again in the afternoon. And then you feed them again in the afternoon? That's right, we feed them on these horse cubes which is a, a sort of concentrated food of, of poultry grain and lucerne, you know, anything of that nature goes mm -hmm. into to making the cubes. Well, they certainly seem to enjoy it. The various carnivore are fed a wide range of meats. Plus there are the many fruits, lettuce, etc. for the primates. The lions, however, are fed four times a week in order to keep to their normal eating pattern in the wild, as they tend to gorge themselves at each feeding. his own mind, hasn't he? He wants to fight. Yeah. Just watch that female doesn't come, Marshal. Yeah, yeah. We must do this quickly, eh? Otherwise, we don't want to call... Viv's you. wife, Patty, and Viv's two sons, Kevin and Barry, are always there to assist. Especially when it comes to a newborn clip springer. <laughs> watch it, Barry. He bites. A small antelope who makes its home in rocky terrain. We'll do the ear length first. Okay. 75 millimeters. Do the hind leg. Whoops. I've got a loose here. I don't hurt him. Hind leg. 85. That's right. What's next on the list then? Um, tail. Tail. 60 millimeters. Total length. Total length. 610 millimeters. Right. Let's weigh him. Let's check the six. Yes, we will check tail. afterwards. Right. Let's put the little chappy in the bag. All right, my little thing, come. All right, all right. All right, I'm sorry. All right, you got that piece of string? Well, it doesn't matter, just hook it. All right, all right, all right. All right. Door. Right, you can hang it up. That's just one side of it. All right, little thing. Can you just read that off there? What, what, what? Seven and three quarter pounds. 
Right. Last one. We just want to do his height. Put your finger. Right. 310 millimeters high. Just let's look at him quickly. All right. You see his, his pre-orbital glands are hardly even developed. Yes. See, there's just a tiny little mark there. Mm -hmm. I think that's all. Let's let him go now. Come on. Sorry. All right, jump. All right. Come on. Off you go. There. Wow. Yeah. See, it wasn't all that bad. No, it's, it's just <laughs> so necessary to do it, Marshall, oh, because gosh, yes. we know so little about the growth and the development of, of mm -hmm. baby Clipspringer. Well, where else would you ever be able to do this except in a zoo? That's right. They very seldom breed in captivity. Yeah. So we're lucky to be able to have the gestation period of this thing. We've got its birth weight and the birth measurements. So it's just a matter now of continuing, continuing to measure and weigh him once a month, and then we can get some sort of graph of his body and growth. Once and you have that, you send it into scientific journals and so on for other people's information, That's and right. zoologists and so on, right? Yes. Hello, what brings you to Chip and Garlic? Unfortunately, I had to shoot a lion this morning. Oh, oh, nice. this morning. Can I introduce you quickly to Marshall? Marshall Thompson? Yeah, yeah, how, you? how do you do? Oh, oh my gosh, a little lion came <laughs> What happened, Ian? I had to shoot this lioness this morning. She took a couple of cattle last night. And um, we, and how did you get hold of the babies then? One of my scouts went and found her. Really? <laughs> did they go out immediately and find them? saw that her teeth were a little bit big and yeah. looked like milk, so I told them to go around and start looking. Yeah. Was there just three? That's all we found, yeah. Oh, they're very young. Look at them. Oh. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Oh. Well, I think this sort of thing happens pretty frequently around here at Chip and Gully, doesn't it? Well, in these sort of things? very much, Marshall. That's the thing, you know. People who are ranching and that have got to protect their stock. Sure. And, and, you know, any of these large predators are unfortunately destroyed. Yeah. And so often they have young. Boy, well, these are cute little lion combines. I think we should get them out of the sun and yeah. try and feed them as soon as possible here. Okay, Let's fine. put them back inside. So Come you on. can do something for them, Ikem? We'll certainly take them and look after them yet. Viv, well, I know that you, Kevin, and Barry are not into uh, falconry, but what are these? Aren't these falcons or what? Well, birds of prey are a very interesting group of birds anyway. Mm -hmm as a result of young people taking them out of their nests and trying to teach them falconry and then finding out they can't succeed, we end up by getting many you, of these birds here. You end up young. with them, right? Now, this is an attractive bird. What is that, dude? Marshall, that's the little black-shouldered kite, which is such a common species all over the savannas of Africa. It's, it's a rodent feeder, and late in the afternoon you can see them hovering in the sky searching for rodents below. Now, what is this one here, the little one? A very small one with a yeah. bright mm -hmm. yellow eye is in fact a little uh, sparrowhawk um, and they oh. live mainly in the thickets because of their small size are able to dart in and out amongst the branches and the bushes where they catch most of their prey such as sparrows and larks or, or anything that it can catch. Come on. Oh. Come, come. Hey. Here we are. And this is what? That's the melanistic goshawk. The melanistic yes, goshawk? Yes, which obviously means black. Yeah. You know, you get albinism, you get menalism. And this is a, a, a vicious little killer which will feed on almost anything he can find. It doesn't matter if it's squirrels or small birds or anything else. Now, how did you come about him? Marshall, he was unfortunately shot in the wing oh, really? and the bullet had passed through the wing and into the breast. So when he arrived here, he was very badly damaged and the children have been looking after him and uh, he will eventually go back into the wild again. He looks pretty healthy now, doesn't he? Yes, still he's not all that good now, but he certainly will improve as he is better fed. Will we'll be able to let this one back into the wild? Oh, most certainly, Marshall. It's already beginning to fly and able to kill for itself. Hmm. So the day will come very soon when he will go free again. Oh. Now, why is this one hooded? It's a tame bird that came in to us, but someone had it as a pet, but very, very nervous. So in order to keep the thing uh, under control, as it were, mm -hmm. we put the hood on him so he can't see. If you took it off, he would just try to fly away? That's right. As soon, as soon as you take that hood off, he can see where he's going and will want to fly away. And that will defeat the whole object of the exercise because we are still trying to teach him to kill for himself. If he flew away, he would never be able to find food and would obviously die. 
Now, Kevin and Barry handle all your birds here. Uh, is that their hobby or their avocation or what? Well, it's their hobby to start with, which is very nice. And then, of course, they serve, uh, do the right thing by rearing the birds properly and training them and returning them into the wild again. Oh, that's a wonderful thing. The next thing was to watch Kevin at work. I see also he has to use his mouth, but he doesn't have a... A second hand there. <laughs> well, it's not all that easy, is no, it? No, it's not. Once the bird is on your one end, I mean, yeah. you can only use your mouth in order to get the, the hood off. It takes a lot of time and patience to train a bird until you are confident that it will survive on its own once it is returned to the wild. Viv shares with Kevin that responsibility and dedication. Right because he knows that there is food in the hands. Now, hey, look, he's going to try and get in Kevin's pocket. <laughs> now, he has to take the bells off and everything. No, he leaves the bells on. Oh, really? Oh, yes, the idea of the bells is that once the bird has got some food of his own, and if he does happen to go off into the bush, you can always hear the bells ringing. Sounds like a uh, cat or something, that's yeah. That's uh, right. Never, I don't think you ever told me how uh, Kevin ever got this lanier falcon. Well, Marshall, it came in to Chippengali Orphanage because someone had it as a pet. What the young people were trying to do is actually train it for falconry, but regrettably, with the falcons, it's a more difficult species to deal with, specialized training. Let's get a little closer look, could we? One of the great pleasures of being here at Chip and Golly is, well, the great variety of animal life that one can encounter in a single day. I mean, let's face it, where else can you start your day with a leopard in your room, uh, solve a baboon's dental problem, act as a pediatrician to a baby clip springer, and be involved in training a falcon so he can be returned to the wild, and then <laughs> end up the day being mother to three newborn lion cubs. Marshall, if you can get an animal to drink really well, right from the word go like these are doing, then there's every chance that they're going to survive. That's good news, believe me. That's really Look at this good little news. one you. Hey. Think of the big mane that's going to have around him and weigh 500 pounds or so. Incredible. It is incredible. And you know, when you think their little eyes are still closed now. It'll take about a week or 10 days before they open. About a week's time. One has lots of hassles in a day, but it does always end nicely, fortunately. Yeah. Uh, when you've got beautiful little things like this, it's well worthwhile.
Yes, indeed. It is well worthwhile.